Today in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about zooming. The first and most basic way to zoom in Final Cut Pro is to use the transform tool. You can use the transform tool by selecting this icon here, or you can also achieve that with Shift T, which is my favorite way. And then finally, there's also this icon over here in the transform panel that you can click on, or you can just adjust the different settings here inside of your panel. Now to achieve a zoom in Final Cut Pro, all we would need to do is come over to our scale, we'll click to add a keyframe and then move forward in space and then go ahead and scale up. Now if I were to push play, you can see how the animation plays out. It just quickly zooms in just like so on our boat. Now let's say that I was not happy with the duration of the animation. Well, what we can do is right click and select show video animation and you'll see in here the transform panel with the different keyframes affecting our shot. If we wanted to increase the length of the zoom, all we would need to do is click on this keyframe and drag it out. And so now it will be a much slower zoom or likewise, we could also speed it up by shrinking this up. But you may notice that the zoom is missing a massive feature. Apple, if you're watching this, please add this feature. This zoom is a linear zoom, which means that if I push play, you'll see that it just zooms in and then it's almost like it hits a wall. It just completely stops zooming. And that is because it is lacking easing. And so that is where this next zoom feature comes in, the Ken Burns effect. Since I have my transform tools up, I'm just gonna push enter. That will get rid of those transform tools. What we will do is come to the bottom left, click on this down arrow and select the crop tool, which can also be achieved with shift C. In the crop tool, you'll see there are three different options here at the bottom, trim, crop, and Ken Burns. Go ahead and select the Ken Burns tool. In our viewer, you will see that we have a green box as well as a red box. All you need to do to use this tool is let's go ahead and shrink down this red box and drag it over the subject that we want and we can push done. And so you'll see that as I push play, we have this really nice slow zoom in on our subject and it's got really great easing features. However, what if we want this zoom to be much faster and to still be within the same shot? This is where you're gonna have to employ a few tricks in Final Cut Pro. If we wanted this zoom to be a little bit shorter, we could go ahead and come to the moment where we want the zoom to stop and push Command B to create a cut. So now this zoom is going to play out for the duration of this cut point. So if we push play, you'll see that it zooms in really fast, but then it restarts the zoom on this next clip. If we wanted the zoom to stay locked in at the end, we would need to select this second clip. I'll push Shift C again to get the crop tool. Then we'll need to come up to the top left and actually flip the animation. So now the small box is the green one and the large box is the red. So using this crop tool, we'll shrink the red box to be the same scale as the green box. And you're gonna just wanna get it as closely as possible unless you want a little bit of motion to it. So now I'll push done. And if we push play, we will zoom in and then our position will completely lock. If we wanted to do a zoom out after that, we could go ahead, push Command B to create that cut, select that third shot, go back into our crop tool, and then from here, we would want to again flip the animation and drag that secondary box all the way out so that we now have this nice zoom in, it stops, and then when it gets to this next cut, it starts to zoom out. So the Ken Burns tool is a really powerful option, especially if you don't wanna buy any plugins. However, in my opinion, the Ken Burns tool is still too complicated for my liking. And so that is why I developed the plugin ProZooms. I designed ProZooms from the ground up, focused on making zooming as easy as possible in Final Cut Pro. When you install ProZooms, you're gonna have it both as an effects version as well as a title version, and all of these options can be found in both places. If you want to apply a zoom, all you need to do is click and drag the zoom onto the timeline just like so. I'll go ahead and shrink this down to the duration of our clip. Now, if I select the ProZoom, you'll see that I have these on-screen controls. I'm gonna push command control one to get rid of that side browser so we can get a clear image of what's going on. So if I push play, you'll see that we now have this nice smooth zoom with perfect easing on our shot. It'll zoom in and then at the end of the clip, it will zoom out. Now, if we wanted to get rid of the zoom in animation, for example, we could go ahead and disable the build in animation right here in the top right. So now we are already pre zoomed in. We can of course move this around to wherever we need and we'll go ahead and have that zoom out animation. Now, 
What's super important when working with a 4K clip on a 1080p timeline is that you don't zoom past 200% Otherwise, you'll start to lose some resolution. So I'm really excited to say that I added this scale lock feature. What you can do is change it over to lock at 200%. And what that means is you can now no longer zoom in past 200% with your on-screen control. That way you know that you're not losing any resolution on your clips. Moving further down, we can adjust the actual speed of our animation. Let's go ahead and just set that to one second. So now the zoom will be a little bit faster in our viewer. Underneath that, there are options for position and rotation but then continuing on we also have our easing options and these are really powerful for getting different looks in Final Cut Pro. If we wanted something to match much closer to the transform tool in Final Cut Pro we could change our easing from ease both over to constant. So now if I push play you'll see we have this zoom in and then it just kind of hits a wall to stop zooming. But moving further down we have this onion skin option. Now something that's really important especially with interview settings and stuff like that is that you always maintain the same eye line. This helps drastically when viewers are watching your video to instantly know where your character is in the scene. What you could normally do is let's say we wanted to do a 30% zoom in here. I'll zoom in 130% and I could push shift T and kind of drag this over in place. So if I push play, we can kind of get that to line up as we want it to. If it's not quite lining up, we might want to push option, click and drag upward, and then we could adjust it over the top of that original shot and drop the opacity down 50%. Now I could use the transform tool to line these up so that the eye line is exactly in the same spot. And then finally we could trim it down and then select that clip and push command option and down arrow to get that back on the timeline. So now we know that the eye line is going to line up as it should. This is far too many steps and that is where the onion skinning feature comes into play. I'm gonna apply pro zooms as an effect onto this clip. Let's enable the onion skinning feature and then we can just drag it so that her eyes are directly lined up. We'll go ahead and disable the built-in animation and then disable the onion skinning. So if I push play, her eye line is lining up exactly as it should in just a couple seconds. And finally, we get down into the sharpening features. Let's go ahead and enable sharpening and we can drag up the radius and amount quite a bit so we can really see how this effect is playing out. I'll also re-enable the zoom in animation. So as I push play, you'll notice that the image slowly sharpens up to the levels that we set it to. This is to keep it really subtle so that your audience doesn't recognize that you've added any sharpening to your video, but it helps to almost up the resolution of your clips in a really powerful way. So again, I'll push play. You can barely notice that the sharpening is happening, but the video looks considerably better, especially at these closer resolutions, which helps, especially if you're working with a 1080p clip on a 1080 timeline and you want to zoom in, but you don't want to lose a whole bunch of resolution. So that's a look at the Pro Zoom tool, but there's also a whole host of other options found within this plugin. Let's go back to our boat clip and let's say we want to actually adjust where the camera is after we've already zoomed in. That is where Pro Pan comes into play. So I'll go ahead and push Command Control 1 to get our titles and drag the Pro Pan down onto the timeline. What's really important is that this Pro Pan tool is underneath the Pro Zooms tool on the timeline. If you do not do that, you're gonna get weird black bars in your video. Now that we have applied the Pro Pan, we'll move forward a couple seconds past the point of the animation. Then we can go ahead and just click and drag to wherever we want to adjust the pan to be. So let's say we wanna to go to that bottom left corner and I'll go ahead and actually shrink it down so that we can zoom in even further. So now we have this nice zoom in and then we'll go to the bottom left hand corner. Now if we wanted to, we could actually add even a third pan to this. So let's go ahead, click and drag the pro pan tool a third time down onto the timeline. From there, we'll make sure it's selected. We might not see the reticle here, so let's go ahead and push Command minus to zoom out. And to apply this, we'll move forward a couple seconds in our timeline and click and drag to where we want the final zoom to be. Let's say we wanna zoom out now. So I'll push Shift Z to zoom back in. We'll push play. We have this nice zoom in, go to the bottom left and then zoom back up to the boat just like so. So those are just the zoom features, but what is the pro burns feature? Let's go ahead and apply pro burns onto our timeline. Now the pro burns works very similar in the same way as the actual Ken Burns tool in Final Cut Pro. The duration of our pro burns tool is going to be the duration of our title, or if you apply it as an effect, it'll be the duration of your clip. If we want to shorten it, we could, of 
course, just shorten down the title. And so we'll have a much faster zoom in. But let's say we want to actually stop the zoom before the end of the title. So I'll go ahead and set this to the full duration of our clip. We can come up to the top right. Let's set the zoom duration to 50%. And so now the animation is actually going to finish halfway through this clip. So if I push play, the animation should end somewhere in here just like so. And again, it's got that really nice easing. But if we wanted to, we could also use the hold version of this clip. So I'll push option, click and drag, and we'll just shorten down this secondary version here. And then we'll come up to the top right and change the movement type from zoom over to hold. What that's going to do is it's going to lock it to the final position so you're not trying to readjust where these boxes are in your videos. If we wanted to zoom back out, we could just push command B to create a cut and we'll change it back over to zoom and then set it to reverse. So now if we push play, we'll have the zoom in over this first pro burns effect. We will have the hold frame here in the middle and then at the end, it will start to zoom out. So that is going to achieve the same thing that I showed you originally with the Ken Burns tool. However, because it's all titles, you're not making any cuts to the underlying clips, which is really, really powerful. And again, this does have the onion skinning feature as well as the sharpening. So these are all essential tools in my opinion to really enhance your zooming experience in Final Cut. Pro. So that is a look at all the different ways you can zoom in Final Cut Pro. If you want to pick up my Pro Zooms plugin, I'll have a link down below plus a little discount code for you just as a thank you for watching this video. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.